He's wide open here in the corner. He wants it. He's going to shoot it. He hit it. That's a new school record. Azusa Pacific, 48 points by the man from Renton, Washington, Joey Schreiber. Just continually looking for things to take you out. Once I realized that, I, I was like, wow, like I need to make a change, right? Mm -hmm. Like I need to figure out ways to go in, turn yeah. me in. Yeah. Um, so I can seriously live this life and not look back 20 yeah. years from now and be like, wow, you know, life really just lived me. You know, I didn't really have any say on certain things. Like, yeah, I want to like look back on my life and be like, you know, wow, I had some amazing experiences, some amazing flow states where like, I was in the deal and I was having the time of my life with, you know, whether that's just like walk in the morning or you know, being with your friends or even like those peak experiences where you're scoring 48, like everything in between. I want it all to be memorable. Hello and welcome to the Flow Station Podcast. I'm your host, Will Ferris, and as always, the goal is to help you cultivate your unique flow by bringing on guests who have tapped into theirs. Speaking of someone who's tapped into theirs, I got my guy, Jay Shribes, in the building. How you doing today, brother? I'm doing great. How you doing? Good, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Appreciate it. Right, so Joey and I have, have been great friends over the last few years, but um, you know we've tuned in deeply on and off the court, not just you know as athletes, but also as people. Um, so Joey, what is what is kind of your current flow, bro? Um, what are some improvements and in recent uh, inner awarenesses that you've been tapping into? Yeah, man. Um, you know, just recently, I think uh, been going through a couple different uh, trials and struggles and really trying to like work on myself and kind of like be present, be a, a full on being rather than, you know, having life happen to me, just kind of have, you know, me happen to life. And uh, that's kind of like the key thing that I've been tuned into. Um, another thing is like uh, being thankful for those struggles and through the, you know, those, those valleys of life. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of can get sulky and down and um, when those things come about, but, uh, you know, one thing recently that even this morning, like just tuning in being thankful and grateful for everything. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, man, you have so many accomplishments, much of which I think a lot of people growing up would be like, if I had that, I'd be happy. You know, yeah, I, if I, if I sure. played in college basketball and set school records, you know, in points and I'm the man on campus and I'm also, you know, starting a company and, and, and being successful there. You know, what are some insights you have in that and, and what you've learned from that journey of, of succeeding, but, you know, maybe not fall, but maybe falling short on, on the fulfillment side of things? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, those, all those accomplishments are great, um, but, you know, it has to come within. And for me, um, for a while, I was worried about, like, you know, what people are thinking of me and, you know, hey, I've scored 48 points, let me go straight to Instagram, let me post it, let, you know, I gotta let people know. And, you know, I think recently I've been kind of thinking like, hey, you know, I need to be doing these things for myself, for the enjoyment of the process rather than, you know, what people think of me or, hey, this will look great on social media. Um, so, you know, I think back then and now I have a little bit different um, outlook on those kind of things. Not to say that, you know, that external benefit isn't, you know, there and isn't rewarding because it is. I think that's good to have. Um, but recently I've been really trying to tune into, like, what can I do um, for myself and, you know, to be fulfilled inside rather than necessarily having someone come up to me, hey, I heard you scored 48, like, congrats, and, you know, getting that feeling from someone else um, and just doing it for the love of doing it rather than, um, you know, like I said, the external benefit. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So much, so much of flow, I think is autonomy and, and doing it for the act itself. And I think, yeah. you know, you and I both know how much of a, a grind and so much work we put into, to get to where we were as shooters. And then sure. it's almost like you get to the end of your career and everything is for someone else. Yeah. It's like, you're almost screwing over that little Joey that, you know, put in the hours and put in sure. the time and was the one who really got you there. You know, that little kid who loved the game. Definitely. And I remember, you know, sitting at APU with one of my mentors, Jordan Hamilton, he was, he's like, you know, excuse my language, but he's like, fuck you, but also fuck you to the little kid. You're, you're saying fuck you to the little kid yeah. who 
all he ever wanted was just to put on a jersey and play in front exactly. of those lights. Yeah. Um, but I guess talk about that. When did you start falling in love with the game and I guess falling in love with life itself and, and how does that ground you now? Yeah, I mean, I grew up playing sports and, um, you know, I played them all, soccer, baseball, basketball. I didn't really have one specific one that I focus on. Um, and I think that actually was good for me um, just because, you know, as a young kid, you don't really know, like, what you want um, or, like, you know, I think parents pressure their kids now to, like, play one specific sport and I think that limits kids and limits their creativity a little bit Mm. um so I think it was around eighth grade where I kind of hit a growth spurt and you know I got really tall and I was like hey maybe basketball could be my sport and you know I really just kind of like I think my personality and my kind of my uh character my traits are just like if I set my mind to something I just go you know full force at that one thing whether that's you know business or you know friendships like just I just put my whole self into it and basketball I think you know I I just felt I think I fell in love that you know my eighth grade year I wasn't in uh you know into select or AU or anything like that growing up but that's when I really started getting into it and um you know during high school I just loved it I uh actually skipped my prom for an AU game oh, and like there we go. I was just man I just fell in love with it and uh it just you know I just remember going outside and you know my little little hoop by my house and um shooting shots in the rain and like coming home and watching motivational videos <laughs> on my computer how bad do you want to breathe exactly <laughs> that exact one and uh you know that kind of just brings me back to like why I started and I think you know we can, you know, get into a little bit more um, later, but like once I got to college, it was a little bit more of a struggle to find that like love of the game because um, there was so much pressure on, you know, performing and winning, and um, you know the coaches expected something from you. Um, not to say that you know high school wasn't that too, but it's college felt just a little bit more like a job to me, and um, so I think we we kind of like had that same. Uh, struggle and we we've talked about it uh, even my last year at APU just trying to find that um, almost that middle ground and like hey you know still want to perform but we want that love of the game still so that can you know kind of propel us to that next level and feel that flow that we all talk about and that we all crave yeah and uh, so that I mean that that was kind of like our journey and that's kind of been our journey from um, since we've met and so yeah yeah no, it really has. I mean, I met Joey. I transferred, and it was my my junior season. And I meet Joey, and we're just talking about all these things in his car. I remember my first night there, and we're going over, you know, what of our best games, and why were we in it, and why do we love the game, and how do we stay in that? Um, and I think that became what why we became so close is we we understood each other, and we understood that hey, we're both going through some things that you know we don't we don't necessarily like about ourselves, and we know it's not helping us. But how do we you know get past that and tune into that? Um, but I have one game specifically, obviously, you know, everyone points to this in your career, but I remember before the game, we're talking about like, Hey, let's treat this like a rec league game. So let's go in and start, start going in. Like, you know, when you're wearing the wristbands and you got, you can only guard the guy that has your color and let's just treat it like that. You know, this game is just gonna be fun. We're playing Hawaii Hilo at home. Um, and all of a sudden you just start going off and I'll, I'll let you go into it. But I remember one vivid moment in that game you just start yelling, this is rec league, this is rec, rec league. And the other team is like, what is this guy saying? And I'm, and I'm almost like, yo, c- cool it down a little bit. Yeah. But this guy was going off. And, and so, Joey, you ended up with 48 that game. Just take me through, you know, what was that flow like? Why do you feel like you got into it? And, yeah. and why, why don't you think you can always be in that flow? For sure. Um, I think re- rewind like a couple weeks and even the month before that game, um, I was kind of going through it, right? Like it just – my shot wasn't feeling on and I was just kind of like it was my last year and you know we weren't winning as much as we'd, we we would have liked to and um, so I mean things weren't going great right and uh, I kind of like took that experience that struggle and I was like you know what there, there's really nothing I can lose at this point like I just got to go out in this game be free flow and let it come to me and I think 
before that game, we, uh, you and I actually played the coaches in the shooting contest that we, we played almost before every game, after every shoot around. Um, but this one was uh, specifically special, I remember. Um, you know, we were both just like hitting everything. And, you know, I kept stepping back further and further, hitting it. <laughs> and I think that kind of sparked my flow a little bit. I was like, dang, you know, I still got this, right? Like, it's, it didn't go anywhere. It's, you know, I, the motion's there, the shots have been taken. Um, you know, it's all in my head, right? So, you know, I go into the game with kind of this new attitude that, you know, I'm going to just let it come to me. I'm going to go out there and just play. Like, you know, there's no, there's really nothing I can lose at this point. And I just remember, like, I caught the ball on the wing, the first shot, I caught it, shot it. It felt like beautiful, right? It came off the fingers nice in and I just stuck my tongue out and I was just like, <laughs> it's here. Like, this is gonna, this is it right here. Like, this is gonna be a hell of a game, right? That's what I know. The yeah. tongue comes out, it's ugly. And so it was just an amazing experience for sure, something I'll never forget. Um, but yeah, I mean, one thing led, or, led to another and uh, I can't really tell you what was going through my mind the whole game and I think that's the key, like nothing really was going through my mind. It was just you know, in the present moment, I was fluid, everything fell right. And I think that's, um, you know, as an athlete, those are those peak performances, those, you know, flow states that you immerse yourself in, Hmm. and you like remember for the rest of your life. And those, you know, that's, I think that's what we live for as human beings. Um, And we can get into it later. But I think the key is to take those flow states and those moments that, you know, maybe I had in that game, and apply it to everyday life. Um, I think it, as an athlete, it's easy to, um, you know, replicate those flow states. But the challenge is, you know, everyday life and the mundane. Um, and yeah, so that was that was it. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. it's just awesome to hear. And being a part of it was pretty cool too. And and just, you know, talk about the aftermath though. You know, so you talked about the external pressures, and you finally tap into this flow that you know you're capable of, of doing. Mm-hmm. And then, you know how come you couldn't replicate that again? I mean, I'm not saying you didn't, but I'm saying yeah. what what could have taken you off course from replicating it again? Uh, I mean, I think the difference between then and now is I'm a little bit more aware of my being. I think back then, I it was almost it just happened naturally. And I think that's great. Um, and, you know, it worked out and all that. But um, I don't know if I handled it correctly, even the aftermath, like, I felt, you know, my ego was a little bit inflated. I'm not going to lie. Like, I scored 48. Everyone's talking (laughs) about it. I'm up for, you know, player of the week in the nation. Like, I'm retweeting it. Like, I'm getting all this love, right? And, I mean, that's just kind of feeding the ego a little bit. And um, I think it was a challenge for me to, like, that next game, you're kind of thinking of, oh, you know, everyone knows I had 48 last game, you know, like. I should, you know, probably do that again, right? And mm-hmm. so you, you kind of have that added pressure. Um, and that was a, a little hard for me. I think the rest of the year, my identity was kind of that game. And for better or for worse, I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, but I think if it was, if it was to happen again, um, I might be able to replicate it a little bit more just because uh, I wouldn't have judgment on it and I wouldn't, try and force it again and uh i think that's when it will come naturally is when you're not forcing it yeah and uh yeah i think i wanted to happen so badly it might have just i might have just kind of screwed it there but no i think yeah that's yeah i think i think that's very well said and and you know, I will always tell people there's so many games that I won't remember, but the games I will were when I was in that peak flow. And it's not because, you know, I got anything from it, but like the experience out there when you're in front of, you know, fans and you're you're playing this beautiful game with your with your teammates who you grind with all year and you're in this peak state mm-hmm. that you just can't replicate anywhere else. Yeah. That's like what we live for. It's not really, yeah. you know, the post or the or the success that comes from it, but just how deeply in tune you were and I think you and I both know now that we're you know kind of coming to the end of our basketball I mean you know, we, we still play every, yeah. every now and then but um, you know as we come down from it those are the ones we really remember and that's the reason why 
you know, it forces us to be like, why can't I flow like that in everyday life? Mm -hmm. Um, So talk a little bit about what you've gone through over the past few years without hoop and and what you've been trying to do to tune into that flow on a day-to-day basis without the game of basketball. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm about two years removed from hoops and uh, that first summer, you know, after graduating was hard for sure. You know, you grow up and your identity is hoops and like you're Joey, the basketball player, right? And, uh, you know, I've even had people, you know, most of the time when you meet people, they come up to you and, you know, they say, wow, you're tall, you must play basketball, right? And so for the longest time, my identity was, you know, a basketball player. And uh, I'm not going to lie, like that first year was tough, um, just the adjustment of, you know, not being a basketball player anymore and that not being my identity. So I just kind of had to find, like, something else that I could, you know, latch on, I guess not latch on to, but, like, kind of, you know, other hobbies and um, stuff like that. I think I made a mistake uh, after I graduated, after hoops was over. I took, like, eight months off from ever touching a basketball or even a weight, and we, we were in the midst of starting the Genius brand, the supplement brand, and I just was so focused. That was kind of the thing that kind of took hoops over. It was like the business started, and I just went fully into it. Like I said, like that's kind of, I guess, my personality is. Um, I just kind of like went all in, right? And, you know, those, those were long days, long hours, and um, that, I guess that kind of took over that empty feeling for a while. And I realized that, hey, you know, like having that love of the game back um, is special. And I can have that now without necessarily the pressures of college basketball. And I kind of had this like um, rejuvenation of that like love of the game. And after those eight months, I started playing again, you know, in men's league and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, back in the weight room and training and I realized that you know I can get into flow and these peak performances still you know like I don't need necessarily fans in the stand or you know external recognition like I can practice my flow in these men's league games or even by myself in the gym like I can still get there and I think it's still for me the easiest way to get into flow is the you know through basketball you know I think you could agree like you know, training definitely tunes you in and takes you to that next level. So, I mean, that's that's kind of where I'm at now. I've I've definitely got a better balance on things um, since since graduation and since you know being done with my college career. Just kind of balancing business life, you know, still getting in the weight room in the gym and kind of like meshing all these things together. And um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So, I mean, we've we've kind of hovered around the word flow in this whole interview and we haven't really gotten your description of it but you know just as you spoke about it it was like a letting go it was a you knew you had the talent so it was just unconsciously just not getting in the way almost Mm -hmm. Um, and how beautiful that is and I think what I've tuned into lately is just when you're in a space of gratitude and you're not expecting anything and you just kind of love in that space I think for me it helps me tune into the moment easier it's not like I, I need something from you know, the hike or I need something from my meditation or Definitely. something, you know, from my day or my food even, I can just be grateful and tune into it, you know, for what it is and, and how I'm experiencing. But, you know, for you, what, what, it, how has your definition of flow changed, you know, you know, as you look at it for, from a basketball perspective, but also just a life perspective? Yeah, I think um, early on, like even in the 48 point game, I didn't really know what flow was. I knew that, you know, had these experiences where I, you know, these out-of-body experiences where you're in the zone and, you know, I guess the technical definition of flow, right? And, uh, you know, as, you know, the last couple of years have progressed, I've, you know, I've kind of understood it more. And it's also, that's also come with its curses where it's like, okay, now I know like what flow is. And I almost was forcing it, trying to get to flow, like trying to tune in too much. And that's just, I mean, you and I both know that's just not what flow is, right? Right. You can't force it. the complete opposite of flow. Exactly. (laughs) So, you know, I've just, uh, you know, as of late, I've been just trying to, like, 
have, you know, let flow come to me. And I think, you know, I've talked about it, you know, a bunch in this podcast, but like those struggles, you know, they, they ground you to a, a way where, you know, you don't, you're not expecting anything. You just kind of, you seriously let go of all, everything and you're just, you're at this low moment. And I think that's where my like peak flows come from. Um, obviously the challenge is, you know, these, these struggles, you know, you try and get to the flow without them. Um, but I think that recently I've been really grateful for the struggles yeah. and that's like kind of, that's what's tuned me in lately. Um, and you know, things happen to everyone. And, uh, you know, this morning I was, I woke up and I had my one hour of no technology and, uh, you know, hit a little meditation, a little, uh, prayer in the morning. And this song comes on that says like, you know, without the, without the rain, there wouldn't be any rainbows. And that just like really hit me hard. I was like, wow, like, you know, that's deep. Like I, that's what I needed to hear for sure. Um, you know, if you're close to me, you know, like there's been, I've been struggling lately and you know, that kind of just like released me. And I felt like this like supreme flow just come over me. Like, you know what? Like I'm thankful for every moment, right? I'm thankful for this hard time right now because I know that it's going to get me to, you know, a supreme flow or, you know, a peak experience is coming. Um, and so, you know, that's recently, um, you know, I don't know if you want me to talk about kind of my daily routine at all, but like, you know, we've been kind of tapping into it together. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like where, where I'm at. Yeah, there. man. No, it's beautiful. I think the other day too, I was walking, I just started bawling, crying, thinking yeah. just so gratefully, like when you understand that and you look back on all those down moments, you know, you yeah. and I both, you know, struggled with different <laughs> mental health deals and, and just trying to tap into that. And I yeah. think a lot of that is because we understood what flow was. Like we felt this peak experience. Yeah. Like, why can't I be in it all the exactly. time? And I think for me, it was like, I couldn't accept not being in it. So I just yeah. kept studying. I studied, I studied all these different things. And I finally came across this book called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Mm-hmm. And he basically says in that book, if you have this intellectual idea of what you want the meditation to be or what you want your experience to be, you know, it'll just add another burden, no matter even if it's a good intention or not. And in so much of our lives, you know, being intellectual beings, we, we have to let go of that at some extent. And I think what I've learned is those flow experiences should just push your motivation to feel that more, but understand what's the right process to get there. You know, what's going on inside? What's my self-talk like? You know, yeah. where's like why the reason why we started this one hour in the morning in, away from the phone, like yeah. we wake up and just don't touch it is to really understand, like, are we a slave to our phones? Like, are we just run by the dopamine that we get from looking at our phones? And I think I've get, come to so many deep realizations. that I'm only on day four. Yeah. And, I, and I know I'm sure you've probably experienced it, oh, too. Absolutely. But um, yeah, how is that? How has that one hour in the morning just really changed your perspective on the day and, and how you utilize the tool of a cell phone instead of having it yeah. be just like what you have to be on all the time? Exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, so, you know, the last couple of days, uh, you know, you wake up that first hour, um, you cannot use any technology, right? So that means your phone, TV, um, Xbox, whatever, you know, you're, you're totally, you know, you either have to do something outside or, you know, read, meditate, something like that. And uh, I think most people, they wake up in the morning and uh, they roll over, they turn off their alarm and they're straight to their phone, right? And they're getting hit with that dopamine, like that instantly Mm. in the morning. They're getting that pleasure. Um, It might feel great, but now your body is at that, you know, that level where it needs more dopamine and it just it cycle kind of, begins. Yeah, the cycle begins and it feeds off itself. Um, you know, I think of it as like when, you know, in the morning, we're kind of like a blank slate. Mm. We're like a That's fresh, cool, yeah. fresh whiteboard. And, you know, if you, whatever you kind of like put into your body, like whether that's food or like mm. thoughts, anything in the morning, that kind of like starts you off, right, for the rest of the day. And uh, so I think it's, you know, extremely important for you to take at least an hour in the morning to like, you know, just be with yourself and just be still in the moment. And, uh, 
you know, that's just been like a huge change huge, for me. Yeah. Like just like opened me up to <laughs> yeah. so many different, you know, insights and um, it's been seriously beautiful. Like I know you've talked about it as well. It's just. Uh, it's hard to describe almost. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like even when you are on your phone, it's like you're not attached to it. Mm. Because, I mean, obviously with work and everything, you, I need to be on my phone. And, um, but that first hour just sets me up beautifully for the rest of the day. And it um, it's just been a game changer for me yeah. in the last couple of days. I mean, I, I've dealt with anxiety, I think, for a long time. And I think yeah. this, you know, I've over the past five years, I've really taken a deep dive in, like, what could be causing this? You know, yeah. what, what's going on? You know, I feel yeah. like I... I'm in tune with myself. I, I meditate every day. I do all these different things. And I was like, you know, I never really took a long enough break from my phone to really see if that, that yeah. could be an issue. Yeah. And now I just start waking up. I, my idea was just no, fo- no, no food, no phone, first hour. And, and it's not even restricting. It's like you go outside, you could yeah. shower, you could clean your room. I feel like so many insights have come my way and, and I notice this unconsciousness that I have in my body to just want to reach my phone, want to go eat some sugary foods or some chips mm-hmm. and just noticing that it gives you this like confidence for the day. Yeah. Like I can go without this phone for an hour. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't need it. And, and there's so many cool things like today on the walk, I'm seeing that deer and it's like, whoa. Yeah. And then I, and I'm walking back and I see everybody that I walk past is on their phone, like head yeah. down. And I, I almost just, Hey, man. Hey, just, hey, there's a deer right there. You yeah, that's out. what yeah. I'm saying. It just <laughs> calm down. Like, look, look at your, yeah. stop looking at your phone for five seconds. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we talked about this over the weekend too. Um, you know, at Seafair, I, I told you, I was like, man, this is the first time I know, I noticed my unconsciousness Yeah. where I was almost reacting. And this is why I, I learned through meditation is like, you see how you're acting. You see mm-hmm. your reactions to things and, I noted my unconsciousness. I noted when I was doing things that were out of my, you know, what I w- was really intentional about doing. And it was almost just like the thought and the idea was forcing my hand to go get another chip or, yeah. or something else. And and so talk about that for you, like becoming conscious, like yeah. what, what that process has been like for you and, and what you've learned along the way. Yeah. I mean, I think it starts with kind of like that routine and like a schedule where you're kind of like I mentioned your, you know, your being and your living life rather than life living you. You are kind of in charge of your your thoughts, your actions, everything. And I think routine schedule um, helps that. Obviously, you don't want to get too much in the routine where it's just kind of like, you know, things things just kind of happen to you and you're not really consciously going through it um but like I noticed like when I don't wake when I wake up and kind of just go through you know the motions and you know most people I guess would wake up and go their nine to five and kind of just live the same life over and over again um and when you do that it's it's like everything kind of runs together and you're not truly living. Mm. And then when you go home, you're on your phone and, or you watch your show and it's just like, you're, you you get taken out. Right. And you're totally, you're just continually looking for things to take you out. And, um, once I realized that I, I was like, wow, like I need to make a change. Right. Mm. Like I need to figure out ways to go in, to me in. Yeah. Um, so I can seriously live this life and not look back 20 yeah. years from now and be like, wow, you know, life really just lived me. You know, I didn't really have any say on certain things. <laughs> like, deep, man. it's just yeah. like, yeah, I want to like look back on my life and be like, you know, wow, I had some amazing experiences and some amazing flow states where like I was in the deal and I was having the time of my life with, you know, whether that's just like the, you know, simple, like, walk in the morning or you know being with your friends or even like those peak experiences where you score in 48 like everything in between I want it all to be memorable and obviously it's not like I say I want it all but it's not everything's not perfect and but I understand that if I try my best and I um, put the effort in the majority is going to be meaningful and if I put if I have that mindset and that consciousness 
of like trying to make things meaningful, the little things in life, I think it'll all come together and be pretty satisfying for me, you know, looking back yeah, that's, on it. So it's so deep, man. Yeah. Well, so, some as you were speaking, I was I was I'm currently reading a book called The Hack of the American Mind and yeah. you know, as you talked about you wanting to make every moment, you know, so meaningful. Yeah. Like I think that's such a you know, everybody wants to tap into it, but I think there's so many things chemically that are going on in our brain that could hold us from doing that. Definitely. Like everyone's like, oh, I want to live in the moment. I want to yeah. do this. I want to do that. And until I read this book, I started to know it like, all right, you know, I don't smoke or drink. I'm not addicted to anything. You know, I should be cool. Right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my phone, like that's something that, you know, I possibly am addicted to. Like, yeah. I'm on that a lot. You know, I'm mm-hmm. checking that first thing in the morning. I don't really leave the house without it. And so I think that's why the hour in the morning is so crucial. Is like you finally get out of that loop. You finally get out of that, you know, life living you where, where everything is just kind of habitual. And I started to notice that, you know, if I didn't start that habit, if I didn't start that dopamine and I trained my body to, no, nah, like you're going to go, you're going to leave the house without your phone. You're not going to be chained to it. You can live without this. Then I think every moment you can tap into a lot deeper because then you're not waiting to go check your phone. You're not waiting to go see what text you've gotten. You can, like the hike we went on yesterday, I feel like yeah. was the deepest experience I've had in a while where we yeah. were like, we did our hour in the morning. We put our phones on airplane mode the whole hike and we're just up there just having a great time. Definitely. And we're, we're in this deep, you know, peaceful fulfillment state other than, you know, obviously along the hike, there could have been moments where we got bored and we could have looked at our phone and, you know, got some pleasure in dopamine. But, you know, what I've learned is like the more you flood those dopamine gates, the yeah. less receptors you have. So it's like the more dopamine you need and the less fulfillment you have. I think in the past, I've uh, been pretty hard on myself. Even, even so uh, now, I kind of like really critique myself mentally and physically. I think if there's like something a little, a little something's off, I'll be like, oh, you know, I kind of get in my head about it. And, uh, you know, I, I recently, you know, reading that book that you recommended, Zen Mind, Beginner Mind, and kind of just like the conversations we've had um, have helped me a lot to just kind of like, you know, not worry about those things. Because when you tune into those things, they almost come to you more. And I think the mind is extremely, extremely powerful. Everyone knows that. You can just, like, make yourself feel any certain way by, like, being in your head and telling yourself certain things. You know, you could, if you're sick, you know, you can make yourself more sick by thinking about it all day. And I think, you know, just knowing that and having that, you know, no judgment, you know, if something feels off or I'm having a bad day, it's like, you know, it's fine, you know, it's, it'll be all right, and it'll pass, and, um, you know, not, you know, like I said, not having that judgment. You feel like that's it. why, like, we get in ruts, is yeah. it's because we judge it? It's the cycle. Yeah, like, it's if you just start keep, judging it, right? Yeah, and, and, you know, the moment you, the moment you judge it, and you're not aware of you judging it, it starts a vicious cycle of, you know, you go down that road where it's like, everything's worst case, right? It's like, oh, you know, you get to the point where you're like, I'm dying because I had a <laughs> chest pain right here. You know, like I got to go to the doctor, you know, get that checked out. And or, you know, even in your in your mind, right? Like, oh, I'm not worthy or, you know, I'm not good yeah. enough for this. And then you get to the point where you're depressed and you're like, why am I even alive? Like no one loves me. And it's like you, you've t- you're who is who's telling you that? Yeah, that's not you. And like you got to. You got to somehow be aware of that. And obviously, awareness is the first step. But once you're aware of that, you can try and change that and kind of tell yourself, like, you know, I am worthy, right? You love yourself first. How to turn the rain to rainbows, bro. Exactly. And And taking the down. Exactly. And I think there is absolutely beauty in the struggle, right? So it's like when you're in those moments, there's – you know that the only way is up from there. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of my truth right now is just like knowing that, you know, we're all in the same boat and not be too hard on myself because, you know, I might not be there, but I'm trying, I'm, I'm at least trying. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, I think that's, that's set, that goes a long ways. And, um, 
you know, there, there'll be things in the future that'll take me out or t- there'll be bumps in the road, but knowing that and being grateful for those bumps mm. is going to take me even, you know, higher the next time. And it's just, I'm hoping that it'll just keep kind of building um, from there. So Yeah, man, I think, I think that's so, that's huge, man. I think yeah. for all, for all of us, um, you know, just when you come across like an enemy, not, not just like a person, uh, but you know, let's say a bad shooting game. Like we used to hate. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be like, oh, we're over four. I can't shoot again. Oh, no. I, I can't go over five. <laughs> I better hit this one. <laughs> but like, there's so much to learn from those enemies. I, mean, yeah. I look back now and I, I hated that feeling of, go- of missing shots. I yeah. hated that feeling. But now I look back and it's like, it taught me a lot about myself. Like, why did I hate that so much? Mm-hmm. You know, was I doing it for someone else? Was, was someone's approval of me more important than my, my own? Like, I, if I yeah. know... That's why I think your intention is, is the number one thing. Like if I know I put in the work mm-hmm. and I still fail, I should still be able to look myself in the mirror and be okay. Mm-hmm. Same thing as you're talking about with your truth. Like if you know you're on the right path, mm-hmm. why are you beating yourself up about it? You know, let that go and, and good things will find you. They always will. Right. But I think it's the times that we cheat the process. We cheat that. We want that Instagram post. We want that yeah. end goal. We want that. You know, we want to show people what I mean, we're doing. It's like instant no, gratification. Yeah, no one has that, bro. Yeah. Like nobody has that. I think that's why I ask people about their origin story is like when you're a little kid, you're not thinking about that. Mm-hmm. You, you're on the process. And now you're trying to skip it. Like when you get to 23, I think there's so much pressure on us that yeah. it's let me let me make it now. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm learning that now as I start this podcast, you know, it's like it's a process. You yeah. know, it's going to take a while before, you know good things come to it. But if my heart's in the right place and I bring on the right people, you know, good things will come and then people will listen. Oh, but absolutely. Yeah. I guess the, right the last answer. thing, um, that I have for you is just, you know, a challenge that you might have for viewers. Um, and it could be big or small, but just something that you've tuned into that you feel like you've nailed in your life that, that you would like to share like a nugget or a challenge that you think could really help tune people in, um, as they go on their own journeys. Um, but like I said, could be big or small, but just something that you feel like has, has helped you along your journey. Um, I mean, I think kind of like the theme of this podcast for me has been like the beauty and the struggle and like, you know, I don't think I've necessarily nailed it. Um, but like, that's just kind of like been my big eye opener of, you know, recently. And, uh, you know, just taking, just knowing that, you know, that struggle will pass and that, you know, there's going to be something that, something great to come from it. Because mm-hmm. um, I think a lot of people can get kind of stuck and go down the opposite path and kind of, you know, ask themselves, you know, why is this happening to me? You know, why, you know, poor me, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they, they need to realize, I think, and what I've realized as of late is, you know, these moments happen and you should be, you know, rejoice in them, even though it might sound crazy. Like, why would you be happy for, you know, when, you know, something bad happens? But um, whether that's, you know, a parking ticket or, you know, a sudden loss, like it can be anything and you can uh, practice that with, you know, small things. It doesn't have to be anything like big. Um, and, uh, I think those moments can take you out, but have, you have the opportunity to go in deeper, Mm. um, because of those. And another thing is if you were always in, you wouldn't necessarily be in because (laughs) it would just be normal. Right. Yeah. So you have to be grateful for those times where you're out of the deal or you're in your struggle because, that's when you realize how great those other moments are where you're, you know, in tune and you're flowing and you're feeling good. Right. Don't so, you, don't you feel like it helps you? Your, your like gratitude almost like, Oh, absolutely. Man, when yeah. I failed and when I look back and I, I'm failing as a little kid yeah. and I can be grateful for the moment now because like that kid went through it and still kept yes. going. And Is I'm that here what now. Yeah. Yes. And I'm, I'm better because of it. Yeah. Right? So that's kind of, that's, that's uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's a big, big deal for me right now. Yeah, well, thank you, man, for coming on. That's all I have, unless you have any last words for the viewers. But 
Um, you guys can follow Joey Schreiber, J Schreibs Four, uh, on the IG. Post some. He's, he's probably gonna have some posts. I'm gonna have some Euro, Euro posts. You might Check get some, out. some shirtless pics in the uh, <laughs> in the ocean. And, yeah. But yeah, thank you for coming on, bro. I mean, obviously we're great friends. We'll keep tuning in. But sure. um, you know, thanks for being open and honest with the uh, the viewers. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Hoping that uh, you know this helps people out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning into the Flow Station podcast. If you enjoyed it, please rate it, share it with your friends, and uh, follow us on Instagram at Flow Station Podcast or Twitter at the Flow Station. Um, more content on the way, more guests, and uh, more flowing to do. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.